what a day! What a lovely day! Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Arcane Designs Praytheon Prototype. And this knife is kind of being passed around uh, through a, a few different people. And we're all getting a chance to see what this knife is like right before the uh, pre-order drops, which is actually going to be in just a couple of days, June 30th, 2022, for those that are going to find this interesting and want to get one for themselves you'll certainly be able to. And that's a nice thing to be able to do for a change is come out here and show you a pretty cool knife that's going to actually be available. Well, as long as you watch this video in time and catch it before the pre-order sells out. But you know what I mean. To be able to have this out here and say, yes, you are going to be able to buy this knife. Yeehaw! That's not something um, I get a chance to do very often. Just like I don't front flip very often, as you can very easily see there. So what's the deal with this knife? Um, it's actually a lot smaller than I expected it to be. In pictures, uh, it just seemed like it was going to be a little bit larger um, like the other Arcane Designs models that have come out previous. But uh, what Israel is doing with this one, he's actually striking out to do a few different things than he's done before. And we'll get into that in just a couple of seconds. So what is the Praytheon? Okay, so the basics are um, the direct pre-order starts uh, June 30th. I don't know what time of the day, but June 30th, 2022, just a couple of days from now. And the prices will range from uh, as low as $190, which is pure insanity, up to $640 for the fancy uh, Dama Steel versions. Um, the owner and designer of uh, Arcane Designs is Israel Bacchus, and he's shown himself already, even though he's a young designer, young to the industry, um, that he has a creative flair. He has an interesting eye for uh, small details that a lot of other people really either just don't see or just really don't think of doing, especially when you're looking at um, some of the designs that he's done in the past that may have just could have just been a very basic titanium frame lock and then he has these uh, i don't even know what to call them i'm going to call them stations because they're not inlays they're really more or less onlays but he'll put these stations around the pivot and in other key areas that highlight the futuristic sci-fi look that he's going for in his designs Another thing he does, he does very dramatic bevels on his frames as well. And those two elements, uh, those elements of his design DNA are following through in this knife as well, including the uh, aggressively styled blade. It's a great blade shape, uh, but having the milled pocket there really adds a three-dimensional effect to an otherwise fairly standard blade. This top swedge uh, is absolutely ground in, in, in an, I don't want to say an odd way because there's a negative connotation when you say odd, but in a unique manner. It looks different. It would normally be brought down to the tip with most makers. Um, and all he did was, you know, because he's uh, it's a swedge, it's really there for a highlight. There's no functional purpose. So he's using it as a highlight. This is a true design aspect. Um, and it helps add character to that blade. So he's bringing forth the design DNA that we're somewhat accustomed to. The execution is a little bit different. Obviously, the knife is also very small. And he's doing this in a way to make this more affordable for more people. Now, the design concept is a fully ambidextrous compact EDC. So with the three and a quarter inch uh, drop point blade, you've got a thickness of, um, he lists everything in millimeters. I meant to actually measure this and give it to you in, in, uh, in freedom measurements, but he lists it as three millimeters in thickness. Um, I think that it hits that compact EDC goal really, really well. 
and we'll weigh it here in a second and see if it's going to fit your idea of EDC knife as well. Um, it was also designed for multiple deployment options. So you obviously have the thumb studs, so you can thumb flick it. You can, um, I can probably reverse flick it if I really try to get my finger in the right spot. Um, you also have this groove here, and you could probably access that as well to flick it, but I, I just can't do it. It's, it's a little small and it's a little shallow for me to do it, but for people that do that all the time, you'll probably be able to do it. And then you have this to use as a front flipper. Great action, nice and smooth. It's on uh, bearings as you would expect. So you've got multiple deployment options. You've got a compact size and it's ambidextrous because if you notice the pocket clip here, it's not just a deep carry pocket clip, but because it's attached right here at the rear, all you do is unscrew this, take the clip off, switch it around, and screw it back in, and now your clip is on the show side, the presentation side of the knife, and you can carry it as a lefty. Now, you still have an inset tab lock here, an inset liner lock, um, and that's still going to go toward the left, so lefties are still going to have to pull it toward their hand instead of pushing it away like righties do, but uh, other than that, it will be an ambidextrous knife. So I think that this is actually going to hit a lot of different collectors in a lot of different ways. And I think it's going to have a very broad, <clears throat> excuse me, broad mass appeal. And honestly, that's exactly what you want when you're making a production knife. You need to sell in volume in order to make back your investment. So I think that he's made a lot of good, solid choices here. So let's go over the specs very quickly. I'm going to lay the knife right over here. We'll bring the specs up here. And I'm just going to rattle them off very, very quickly. Uh, overall length of 7.3 inches, blade length of three and a quarter, close length four inches. Um, converting things in my head, three millimeters of blade thickness should be around 0 0.13, 0 0.135, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you've got just over a half an inch in handle thickness. Now, if you go into different variations, you're going to have options in G10 or in titanium. If you go into the G10, obviously you're going to go down into that $190 price range. You go into the titanium, you have uh, options in S35VN, 20CV, and Damasteel. You can go all the way up to 640 in the Damasteel. So there's a lot of different options for you there. Um, it's got steel liners on the G10 scales if you're going that way. Otherwise, you'll get the solid titanium that you see here. And uh, I think I already talked about the ambidextrous clip, yada, yada, yada. And that's pretty much it for the specs. Let's get the weight out of the way. Do that very quickly. Because I think weight is going to be a very, very important thing for a lot of people. So let's get the uh, scale out here and get that bad boy turned on. Now, again, if you're doing the G10 variation with the steel liners, it is going to be significantly lighter. This one is 3.9 ounces in the titanium, which uh, admittedly is a little bit hefty for the overall size. And here's what I mean by that. It's not a lot larger. Actually, it's gonna be pretty much comparable to the QSP Penguin, which is 3.2 ounces in a titanium frame lock. Uh, and it's only a little bit larger, <clears throat> excuse me, than the Vero Engineering Mini Synapse, which is only 2.6 ounces. Uh, but obviously you have scales on here, so your titanium gets very, very thin back there. Um, so there's, there's going to be some differences, obviously. Let's give you some of those size comparisons that will be important for you. First off, the QSP Penguin, because a lot of people own the Penguin in its various forms. It is nearly identical in length, just a small fraction of an inch larger in the overall length compared to the Vero Engineering Mini Synapse. This would be more comparable to the regular Synapse. It's a considerably larger knife than the Mini Synapse. Put it up against the Brown Knives Jaeger M. I think that's going to be super close. There you go. That's almost a one-to-one -one comparison with the Jaeger M. It is nearly identical in its overall length and in its blade length and cutting edge. So very, very, very close there. 
And one more just for good measure against the Varga Knives VBR. And it's uh, substantially smaller than the VBR. So there it is butt to butt. You see the VBR is quite a bit larger with its three and a half inch blade. So what you've got is, in my opinion, a good alternative for a solid built and very compact EDC knife. But it's got one little trick up its sleeve. And I'm reaching over here to get something to help me demonstrate this. My Cylon flashlight. Why? Why on earth would I need a flashlight, man? Well, check this out. I'm going to give this a little bit of light here. And then we're going to turn off the studio lights. Oh, yeah. Nobody was expecting that shit. I wasn't even expecting that shit. When I first got the knife in my hands, I took it outside to do a quick little Instagram video. Did a little bit of flippy floppy action with it. And when I came back inside, I looked down and the shredded carbon fiber was glowing. I was like, what the shit? I didn't see that coming. So yeah, it's got a neat little trick up its sleeve. And I'm going to assume that all of the variants are going to have a similar inlay that'll have the glow. Now, if it doesn't, I'm sure in the description when you're choosing your materials and your selection on the website, I'm sure it will tell you if it does or doesn't. But, man, how cool is that? And again, with the milling that's done in it, the unique shape to it, this gives the Praytheon a look that's pretty much unlike anything else on the market. Really nicely done, well executed. Now, I don't know who the OEM for this knife is, and I'm not saying that it's a secret. It's something that, uh, that Israel may have actually divulged already on his Instagram, um, but I didn't catch it. I didn't see it. But I will say that the grinds are done exactly like QSP. And what I mean by that is they do a machine uh, grinding and it leaves this, I don't know if it's going to pick up on camera or not, but it leaves like this rainbow mirror finish. Uh, like looking at the, the playing side of a compact disc, like looking at a CD. It'll reflect all these colors very, very sharply. Um, and I wish I could pick it up on camera, but it's not showing up. So I'm making the assumption that it's made by QSP. I, I could be incorrect. I may not be correct on that at all. Uh, but just by the way it's, it's, it has been ground and finished, it appears that it would be. Um, looks like you have a captive pivot on this side, so it's a nice, clean, flat cap, basically, with your adjustment back here, which I'm going to assume is a T8, and only one other piece of hardware back here that holds the knife together across the quarter-length backspacer. So it's wonderfully clean, a little bit of hardware, nothing overdone. I like the look of the thumb studs. Uh, it's complementary to the overall design. I could do without the front flipper tab thing, especially because you have two other methods of deployment on this. Uh, but there are people out there that for some reason still, still keep asking people to make front flippers, so people are doing it. Um, so it's there, and it's, it's very interruptive to the design. If that wasn't there... Um, it really would look a lot more handsome. And there it just looks like this alien appendage sticking out. That's not a, a thing where I'm knocking the design because he's obviously doing it because people have asked for it. For some reason, front flippers are a huge fad right now. They're all the rage. So people that want multiple deployment methods, they also want to be able to do front flipping. So that's just there. That's just the way it is. But you could see from the rest of the design overall that uh, his, his design work is very strategic, very precise. He knows exactly what he's going for. He follows a theme and he hits that theme. Now, if I were to knock anything about the construction of this knife, 
is the fact that all down the spine of the blade, this is extraordinarily sharp. And the problem is, even though you may not ever encounter that when you're using the knife, and, and you might if you're, if you're doing you know, detail work with your index finger, but when the knife is closed, you're going to feel that. And it, that I find that to be really unfortunate. That is extraordinarily sharp to the point where I, I guarantee you if I put a little bit of pressure here and ran my finger up it very quickly, I would slice my finger open. Um, so all the way down from here, from the jimping basically, all the way down to the tip, extraordinarily sharp. Um, that, that is something that he can request that the factory knock off the edges. And I'm fairly certain now after me saying this, if he didn't already see it, he's going to be doing that. Um, this, this knife did go with him to Blade Show last month, or the, the early part of this month, I should say. Uh, so I'm sure that he had a lot of chances to play with it. He probably felt it and already put in that request. And I'm sure a lot of other people that had it in their hand felt the same thing and made that same comment. I am not special. So <laughs> if I'm somehow the first person that recognized it, uh, goody for me and I get a gold star for the day. But I'm going to make the, uh, the basic assumption because of the quality that Israel likes to put out, um, as has been proven historically through his other knives, that he wouldn't let something like that slide. So I would expect that to be rectified before the actual orders arrive for those of you that pre-order. So anyway, that's my uh, overall overview of the knife. What do I think of it overall? Um, it's nice. It's, it's very compact for somebody that's looking for a knife that small and you love his design work, I think you're going to be very, very, very happy. I personally just wish it was larger. Uh, I think it's a beautiful looking knife. And if it didn't have the front flipper protrusion and it was about a half inch larger, I would be massively, massively in love with it. Like I am with uh, the new model that he just released. I think that thing is absolutely one of the sexiest knives I've ever seen in my life. Uh, so for me, it's a no-go only because of the size. And it's not because I'm opposed to the size. It's just that I have so many small knives right now that I've gotten into this year. And there's four or five more out of my reach right now uh, that I've been carrying. That uh, I just personally don't want to get into too many more smaller knives. And there's something about this the solidity that it has, the feel that it has overall, that I feel would lend itself very, very well to a larger EDC style knife. And and for that, I, I wish, yeah, I, I do. I wish it was a little bit bigger because for me, um, it, it just, it can't work for what I would want to do with it, the way that I would want to hold it. Because the ergonomics, he really understands making a great design and then fitting it into a human hand. He does a great job with that. Where his decorative bevels are cut, they actually complement your hand very, very well. So this is somebody that recognizes form and function at the same time. So yeah, if it was a half inch longer, a little bit, you know, dimensionally, you know, proportionally larger in every aspect, I, I would just be jumping up and down and uh, making a mess all over the floor. But as it stands, uh, I think it's a really great option for you if you want a smaller sized EDC knife. If you're looking for something unique that is designed pretty much unlike anything else on the market and done so affordably. If you go for one of those G10 variations, guys, you're spending under $200, which is insanity. Um, and I think you're in the two, geez, I'm sorry, 350 price range if you do the titanium and 20 CV, perfectly acceptable, $350, perfectly acceptable. Uh, and if you want to go all super fancy and shit and you do the damage deal with titanium, yeah, then you're at 640, you know, then you're spending premium money. Uh, but I feel for what you're getting and the, the, the volume of variations that will be available to you, I think this is going to satisfy a lot of people. That's it for me, guys. I'm out of here for now. Thank you for joining me as always, and I'll see you on the next video.